Dr. Jason Saunders here with HBOT USA. You know, humans have always been fascinated with the idea of the fountain of youth. You know, what are the things, what are the secrets uh, that we could have in our life to make sure that not only do we live a long life, but most importantly, that we live a long, healthy, happy life. And so what we're seeing in today's world is we're seeing that we are pushing the boundary of longevity. In other words, life expectancy is uh, the highest that it's probably ever been as a whole. And centenarians, you know, those living to over 100 years old or older, are one of the largest growing populations percentage-wise, you know, even here in the U.S. But the problem here is that the quality of life index is still pegged around 65 or 67. And so, you know, that latter piece of our life, we just see a, a very sharp decline in quality, even though the years continue on. And so, you know, in speaking with so many people around the country, really around the world, you know, and, and you would know this inherently, yet a lot of us do want to live a long life, but not at the expense of quality. So the question becomes, what are the things that we could be doing to improve the regenerative quality of our body? While we do age chronologically, and we have to, that's okay, can we get the biologic age to more closely match the chronologic age? In other words, I think that most of us would agree that biologically many people uh, appear and function at a much older level than they are by, uh, chronologically. So we all know this. You see some people who are, let's say, 60 years old, but they look and act like they're 80. And you, have, you know some people that are 60 years old and they look and act like they're 40. And so the biggest difference isn't the chronologic age. It's their biology, right? It's their, it's their health and their, um, their resilience and their ability to adapt to their environment. So what are all the different things that we can be doing uh, you know, to improve that? That's really where this regenerative concept comes from. And today I want to talk a little bit more about what role hyperbaric plays in that uh, process. And so what I'd like to say here is that, you know, in the U.S., we have very limited uh, use of hyperbaric oxygen. And primarily, that's an insurance situation. So uh, insurance will only cover about 13 or 14 different hyperbaric uh, indications. So only certain diagnoses could you have where you can go to a hospital and have that hyperbaric session covered. And, but we reserve those for very severe and acute conditions, things like osteomyelitis or a, that's bone infection or gangrene, which is, you know, another infection that some people have, uh, osteonecrosis, which is literally like bone death or, you know, other non-healing wounds, uh, certain neuropathies. So there's, there's a very specific diagnosis that people would have to have in order to have hyperbaric covered by insurance. Now, that being said, there are well over a hundred, probably closer to 150, uh, international approved indications for the use of hyperbaric. So while we're limited in the U.S., worldwide, it's actually used a much greater level than, than it is here. And, uh, you know, probably no one knows that better than I would say Dr. Shai Afradi at the Segal Center in Israel and in, in Tel Aviv. Uh, some of the research that they're putting out is absolutely cutting edge in terms of improving our understanding of exactly what role oxygen plays in our cells' ability to heal and regenerate. And so they're putting out research, Dr. Afradi and his team are putting out research on uh, brain neuroplasticity, the ability for the brain to, you know, to heal and create new connections, how to heal from you know, uh, other neurologic issues like fibromyalgia or uh, post-stroke or uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, and, and now they're even looking further at the that just the general uh, regenerative quality of hyperbaric, uh, very early this year, at the end of January, they put out a research paper on heart function in healthy adults. And so what they were looking at is putting healthy adults through a series of uh, hyperbaric treatments and, and just monitoring heart function. And they saw an increase in heart uh, ejection fraction, even in healthy patients. And so what we know is, uh, and, and as they continue to put out this research, what we're seeing is uh, what role does this increased oxygen play in this tissue capacity for healing and function? We know that when we're young, our, our system seems to heal very quickly. A broken bone or a cut, right? A cut could take, you know, just a couple days in a kid, not even. A broken bone could be, you know, three or four weeks. And then as we age, we could start to see that cut lasting a week or two before it really goes away or a broken bone, uh, even, even months in some cases. And so, um, 
our capacity to regenerate when we're younger because of all the growth factors and stem cells um, are stimulated in, in those growing years, our capacity to heal is increased. And so what, what else could we do to help re-stimulate that as we age? Because as we age, really what's happening is we're getting our cells to degenerate over time or that we're accumulating these micro traumas or macro traumas that aren't healing properly as time goes on. And are there things we could be doing to help accelerate that healing effect so that it doesn't accumulate in the same way? And so that's exactly what we're seeing in the research with hyperbaric oxygen. Some of the most important ingredients related to uh, this regenerative capacity are seen stimulated in hyperbaric oxygen. So just like they were showing uh, in, in that recent study uh, from the Seagal Center, they were showing improved heart function even in healthy patients. Uh, there's a quote in the article from Dr. Afradi saying that basically, you know, mitochondrial function, which is the part of our cell that makes our energy, mitochondrial function decreases as we age. And if we see a decrease in mitochondrial function, what we're really saying is we're seeing a decrease in energy production of our cells. And as our cells produce less energy, they can perform less work. It makes sense. So as we upregulate oxygen, we upregulate mitochondrial function. All of a sudden, those cells are making more energy. The tissue type or that system can now perform more normally. And that's exactly what they're proving through that research. What other ways does hyperbaric oxygen improve the regenerative capacity? So many. One is that it helps to heal mitochondrial function. That's what we were talking about. So not only will it make uh, mitochondria more efficient, but it even increases mitochondrial density. In other words, the body recognizes the increase in oxygen and it actually replicates the mitochondria so that you have more organelles producing even more cellular energy or ATP. It also helps to stimulate and increase uh, stem cell release. And so we get an upregulation of stem cells, both in the bone marrow, so to help uh, the rest of our body heal, but also neurologic uh, stem cells. And so all of a sudden we get stem cells for brain and nervous system to, uh, to increase its capacity to heal as well. We also get an upregulation of collagen formation, uh, growth factors, growth factors in our, again, same thing, in our musculoskeletal system and in our nervous system. Uh, it has the capacity to help us heal the microcirculation. So the way our tissues or cells get oxygen is in the capillaries, the microcirculation. That's where gas exchange occurs. And so many times because of trauma, because of scar tissue, uh, because of toxicity or inflammation, the gas exchange is hindered. And so as you heal the microcirculation, through hyperbaric oxygen, you could also be uh, improving the oxygenation of that tissue. And so healing the microcirculation becomes a critical piece to that regenerative quality, um, especially when we talk about brain injury or TBI or concussion, those types of issues. But really that's true across the board through our whole body. And so uh, between the stem cells, the uh, microcirculation healing, the upregulation of growth factors like collagen factors and brain-derived neurotrophic factor, um, as well as all the other mitochondrial uh, healing and increased capacity, uh, this oxygen plays an enormous role in increasing the body's capacity to heal and regenerate tissue. Are there other factors? Absolutely. You know, we would recommend, obviously, a healthy diet. We use fasting as a way to upregulate stem cells and autophagy red light therapy for the nitric oxide uh, increase as well. So there are certainly other pieces of this puzzle besides hyperbaric oxygen, but I do want to bring to the attention that the oxygen is utilized by almost every cell in our body. And as we upregulate the oxygen, we upregulate our capacity to heal. And as time goes on and as cutting edge research facilities like the Seagal Center continue to pump out research showing, we're going to see not only do we get that same increase uh, in heart function in those healthy adults, we're going to start seeing that we get increased uh, brain performance. We're going to get increased uh, in digestive performance. We're going to get increased uh, performance in really all of our cell types, all of our tissue types, because as we regain function of our body and our body increases its capacity to heal, we increase our capacity to regenerate. So thanks a lot for your attention. We'll see you next time.